Whiskey Fireside Chat number 10. Gonna have a little bit of, uh, well, the remaining of my my single malt. I've always had blended, I think, on, on these Whiskey Fireside Chats because I have no money. Yeah, Tim, uh, Tim Foley from the Canadian Outdoor Equipment Store. Uh, he gave me this for a housewarming gift a long time ago. I think I moved to this place, uh, oh, 2015, midsummer. Man, it's supposed to be spring out right now. Snowing, howling wind, minus eight up on the hill. Oh. And I booked my uh, route to Algonquin uh, today. And uh, <laughs> it makes no sense to do that today, but I booked it and I booked Nipissing River. So we're going to do the Nipissing River uh, to Bob Lake, down the Nipissing, Upper Nipissing. I don't know if you've been there, but it's full of alders. <laughs> Tag alder big time, but good fishing. I'm going to go down further, go back up, go to Rosebury, come back. So no ice on this one. This is a single malt. And I find it, you know, have it on its own or a little bit of water. Hmm. That's that. Thanks, Tim. Osh Kanosh and that's good scotch. What I thought I'd talk about today, something that cool that happened last week. So I, I teach part-time these students, uh, it's called dual credit. So they're high school students, they're not doing uh, well in high school or they're doing well in an outdoor ed program, it's, it's a mix. And I teach part-time college. So what we do is I take them to college for one credit and then they get dual credit and they get through high school and yeah, it's good. You gotta keep them active all the time. The, I mean, the, the tension span right now is like literally maximum eight minutes. So if you don't pull the rabbit out of the hat every eight minutes. So I have to teach them and yet keep them entertained. But what I did last week, I did some thing on leadership. Uh, you know, I, I gotta be honest. Okay, so I wasn't ready for my class. Uh, I was really busy. I've been busy presenting at nights. <laughs> And then all of a sudden I woke up, I got home at 2, 3 in the morning, and I had an 8.30 class. So I had like an hour of sleep, and I was like, yeah, I'm ready for class. Okay, what, what is the subject today? It's called leadership. I can do that. Whatever's in my vehicle. <laughs> so what I had in my vehicle was a whole bunch of stick stoves. Stick stoves are these stoves that, I, I collect them, I, I think they're great. But it, it just, you put sticks, pine cones, any debris into the stoves and they burn and it's really good for fuel consumption. So if you're on a trip. I pulled those out and I said, oh, here's the contest. I put them in groups of two, put them in a line way back in the bush. I said, you're gonna run for about 200 meters. When I say go, you're going to get to a series of six stoves. I'm not gonna tell you how to put them up. Actually, usually I can't put them up myself. Put them up yourself. Here's some water, here's some matches, uh, some lighters. Some lighters didn't work. That was a bit of a challenge. Then you're going to get the stick stoves going, get water on a boil with all the pots I gave you, and I'm going to give you a noodle. It's a spaghetti noodle. So the idea is that they have to get the spaghetti noodle boiling and soft enough that they can tie it into a knot. And once it's in a knot, they win. And they win bonus marks and uh, everything else. It, it, it's a great contest. What's really cool is I found out, well, what stoves worked, what stoves didn't, what students worked, what students didn't. But anyway, that's another story. Who won? Well, my Kelly Kettle from Ireland. Oh, yes. No surprise to me. Uh, the Kelly Kettle is a great uh, six stove. The reason why it burns uh, or boils water so quickly is it boils around the perimeter. So you got a, a base plate like this, and you get the sticks going in there. Then you put that on top, and what happens is that the water's inside here, not on the base, and it shoots flames up like a chimney, uh, and just just draws the flame up, and it boils water. I'd say in about a minute. <laughs> it's funny that they put they, so they, they did this. Uh, the, the group that that grabbed this one, they had no clue what it was. They put it in there, and that was probably soft enough uh, for them to tie a knot in about a minute and a half, but they couldn't find it in there, so, uh, but they won. Who came in second, believe it or not, was this um, Traveler's uh, Grill. Uh, actually, I got this at, oh yeah, going back to, sorry, going back to Tim. So Tim Foley, he, he's the owner of Canadian Outdoor Equipment. 
good friend of mine, good travel companion. We go on a lot of trips. And yeah, I, I, I got to know him because I started buying gear off him and I, I, I love the store. I'm mean, very addicted to the store. Uh, do not bring your visa to his store. His store has a whole bunch of items that you wouldn't get at any other store. That, that's his whole idea. I, I got this from Real Light, Light, Lightweight Grill. Now, the students that had this one, they put rocks to the side, logs to the side, and just built a campfire and put the, the pot in there. They did really well because it was a windy day, so I think the, the oxygen content in the fire really got the thing boiling. Or maybe they're really good students and good leadership abilities and good communication, good team building, or whatever. The other one that, that did well, instead of the Kelly kettle, they used Kelly's what's called a hobo stove. They came in third. The hobo stove is just a, a, a different idea of the Kelly kettle. It's a stick stove that Kelly kettle sells. Put the sticks in there, they got going. This is what I take on the trip. Uh, I'll take either this one or I think it's a Ranger's, a smaller version uh, on trips. And I got six stove and the Kelly, and then I'll put a Trangia uh, alcohol stove in there as well when I think that the wood's too wet to burn. Blah, 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 blah. The other one that did well is the Fire Ant, Emberlight Fire, Fire Ant stove, really lightweight. This is my backpacking stove. This thing weighs nothing. And yeah, it takes a while to get a boil going, uh, depending on the pot because of the size of it. But they came in third. So yeah, who, who, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, no, fourth. So first, second, third, fourth, and oh yeah, fifth was the, oh, I forget, little bug, little bug stove. And I think the main reason, this is a really good stove, it's been around for a long time, really works. It looks simple to set up, but if you have no instructions on how to put this up, you're done. And that's what happened. The students that got to this, hey, oh, it looks cool. They start putting it together and they didn't even put it together right. I think they would have done better, to be quite honest, than, than this guy. I, I love this stove, but yeah, uh, lack of communication, maybe leadership abilities, or whatever. It, anyway, so it didn't do well. The one that actually did poorest, where is it, where is it, where is it? Oh yeah, my firebox, not to say that this is a bad stove. It's heavy, it's my, for backpacking and stuff, it's a stove I would not take backpacking. This is pretty solid uh, piece of metal compared to all the others. It works, it, it produces amazing flame. So I was surprised it lost, but we're not really that surprising because the, the students that used that one had no communication skills whatsoever. They were arguing, they were battling back and forth. They used five noodles because they kept either losing noodles or breaking the noodles in the bush. So they, they came in last. I guess when it all came down to it, they did all really well. The stoves did all really well, but they came, all the students came back thinking, yeah, well, all these stoves you can use with just sticks and pine cones. I came back from, from the day saying, hey, I created a good class today. Uh, the idea of uh, getting a noodle boiled so it's soft enough to, to tie into a knot, that was the key. The funny part about it is though, have a bit of sip of uh, whiskey before I tell you this. The funny part about this is I never thought of the noodle. Don't ever have young students in a naive view yelling out comments like, is your noodle hard? Is your noodle soft? No, my noodle's just about, it's just bent a bit. <laughs> they hadn't a clue what they were saying out loud. Oh, I love the day. Really cold, really bad uh, day out. They had a lot of fun, they learned a lot. It was probably a three hour class that in their minds lasted 10 minutes. But that's what really does it for them. To be in school, learn something without them knowing something. Don't ever tell students they're learning something, that's the worst thing. But they did learn something, I learned something. That's Whiskey Fireside Chat number 10, coming out of uh, Bridge North and Shimong Lake, where it's just a howling out outside and it's not spring. It will be soon though. Thanks for coming in.